So right now we're going to talk about how to find the rate of change in a table. These are linear functions. For now, I will give you nothing but linear functions. The important part about a linear function is that it has a constant rate of change. So that means no matter what interval I look at here, the rate of change is going to be the same always. So of course the rate of change, as we talked about earlier, is the change in y over the change in x. This is delta, means change in. Change in y over change in x. So we can take um, the second y value minus the first to get my change in y. The second x value minus the first to get my change in x. So let's try that. Um, the nice thing here is that I don't necessarily have to follow uh, this equation if you don't want to. It's kind of nice that I can just kind of come down here and say, okay, 2 to 3 is plus 1. That's my change in x. And then I can come down here and say, okay, this is 33 to 34. That's plus 11. That's my change in y. So then if I'm looking at change in y over change in x, x is going to be 11 over 1. And then I can just do that. Divide 11 by 1. That's, of course, just 11. So the rate of change for this table is 11. It'll always be that way because it's linear, and it doesn't even matter which uh, intervals you choose. 2 to 5 is 3 plus 3, as long as you choose the same interval here. 33 to 66 is plus 33. So that would be 33 over 3 for my change in y over change in x, and that's still 11 when I divide it. So we're good there. Let's try another. The important thing to remember here is where is your x and where is your y? Don't get them mixed up. Um, sometimes people think, okay, this is the number on top, so I'll just put that on top right here, and this is the number on bottom, so I'll just put that in the denominator down here because that makes sense when I'm looking at it. Well, that's not right. We gotta remember that x, the change in x is on the bottom, the change in y, is on the top in the numerator. So just be wary of that when, when your tables are given horizontally like this. So I've got here plus 4. Here is plus 3. And again, since this is um, linear, it'll be like that no matter which one I choose. So I'll just leave it at that. Change in y over change in x is... Change in y, remember it's on the bottom down here, so don't get confused and plop those. This is a positive 3 fourths. Hey, this is interesting right here. Let's look at this guy. This is not plus 4 here. This is plus 8. So this one right here is from 18 to 24, and that would be plus 6. Well, that looks different. I thought I said they were all um, the same each interval. Well, let's look at it. My change in y is 6, and my change in x is 8. 6 eighths, I can reduce that by dividing each one of these by 2. They're both divisible by 2. So I can reduce that. That's down to 3 fourths, which is the same thing. 3 fourths is 6 eighths. So yeah, it, I mean, it skipped a, it did a different jump here, but um, the rate of change is the same. So this is the important part here. Change in y over change in x. If Let's do an example of y2 minus y1. Let's say I wanted to do um, these two guys. Let's go ahead and circle them. Here are my two points, 4 and 15, 28 and 33. So these will be my 1s, and these will be my 2s. So I'll do the 2s first. Um, for y2, it's 33 minus y1 is 15. 33 minus 15. Here's x2, 28, minus 4 is x1. 28 minus 4. Okay, 33 minus 15 is 18. And 24, 28 minus 4 is 24. And this is div each divisible by 6. And that's 3 fourths. So you could have gotten it either way. Pick any interval you want. You can use the formula if you want, or you can just use this little uh, kind of jump uh, strategy that we're using here. 